Lighting things on fire is so rarely the solution to a problem, except when it is. Controlled arson. Controlled arson! We can actually tell a lot about the fiber content of cloth using two very simple tests, the burn test and the bleach test. So if you've got some mystery fabric lying around, you want to make sure that your clothing labels aren't lying to you, or you want to see firsthand why certain clothing materials can be detrimental to get caught in a candle flame, these tests can give you the answers you crave. Although forewarning that there is in fact fire and bleach involved here, so if you do decide to try these for yourself, please work only in a fireproof, well-ventilated space and follow all necessary safety precautions. Before we head out to roast things, let's first get some bleach baths going. Protein fibers like wool and silk will dissolve completely in bleach, so this is a great way to tell if you already suspect protein fibers are involved, but you really just want to see if you've got a genuine 100% wool or silk. We're also going to get a little piece of silk to dissolve in this one, because silk is also a protein fiber, so in theory, this will also, if this is silk, become somewhat dissolved. The first thing we'll notice with genuine protein fibers is that they'll start to foam up after a few seconds. This is a surefire sign that there is at least some protein action going on here. No foaming is going to be a sign of synthetic or cellulose fiber content. We'll let those soak for a little while. This is the one that I know is for sure wool. I mean, this is going to be dissolved in five minutes. Yeah, that's really good. This is a thrifted waistcoat here. Okay. That so this, sense. I have no idea what the fiber content is. It's probably not that much wool. It's, I would guess, blended with something. Yes. This one is coming apart a bit. Damn. Go Vivian Westwood. Anyway, we'll leave this for an hour. We'll go out, burn some fabric, and we'll come back and see what happens. Whilst we investigate the protein fiber content of these bleach samples, let us also investigate a mystery. Namely, the mystery of why June's Journey keeps sponsoring this channel. <laughs> Namely, the mystery of who killed June Parker's sister. This gorgeous hidden objects mystery game is set in the roaring 20s and takes you on a thrilling adventure as you work through beautifully illustrated scenes, spotting objects, finding clues, and progressing through the captivating story. You too can become part of the investigation. Exhibit A, in this scene, there is a crucial clue hidden in plain sight. Can you find the difference and find the clue? New chapters are added every week, so there are always new adventures waiting for you. Plus, as you play through the story, you'll earn gifts and materials which you can use to build up your own little island and go on mini quests. I have never known a single person to have more drama in their life than June Parker. And honestly, I love that. Back to our scene, keen-eyed detectives will notice that there are three whiskey glasses in the second image. Was somebody else with Claire and Harry before they died? Or is it just a coincidence? You can download June's Journey for free by clicking the link in my description box below. June's Journey is available on iOS and Android mobile devices, as well as on PC. And now, let's head out to solve the mystery of what is in these fabrics. While we're working with small flames here, obviously there are still open flames involved, so we'll need a fireproof area to work. At home I like to do this in my kitchen sink, but since we are in a commercial building here with very strict open flame policies, we have taken an old pot to a barbecue permitting park. Let's begin with our protein fibers, or textiles made from animal origin like wools and silks. As a general rule, these are going to be fairly flame resistant, and when burnt, they will give off a strong smell of burning hair. No surprise, because our own hair is in fact a protein fiber. We can tell a fabric is a wool if it's slow to catch a flame. It'll leave behind a crunchy ash, but the edge should still be soft. There shouldn't be any rock hard adherence to the burnt edge. Is it wool? Welcome to the UK's favorite game show. It is producing this gray smoke. It is smoldering, it is not catching. It does smell like burning hair. There is no hard plastic on the edge of this. So, yep, we have a wool. Once again, it is smoldering, it is smoking, but it is not catching flame. Oh, that smells like burning hair. And it smells like burning hair. So that is a wool mystery felt. It's melting. Oh, that's melting. That is melting, that is not, yeah, you can see the like plastic string. Oh, oh that's hard. Yeah. This is probably acrylic. 
Silk, on the other hand, will catch fire more easily than wool, but its defining feature is that it is self-extinguishing. So the flame will just kind of put itself out after a few seconds. There isn't a whole lot of smoke involved here, and it will leave behind a similar dark powdery ash as the wools. So you can tell a fabric is made from protein fibers generally if you smell that distinct burning hair smell, and then distinguish between silk and wool by observing the flame and how easily it self-extinguishes. The safest fibers that you could be wearing when you are caught in some flaming situation are the protein-based fibers. So the wools, which are flame resistant, and the silks, which are self-extinguishing. I mean, it's also why you get those fire blankets that are wool blankets, because the wool just like smothers the flame and puts it straight out. But yeah, we just looked this up. Apparently firemen's uniforms up until the 1970s were made from wool, because wool is a very great flame resistant material to be wearing. Moving on to the natural cellulose fibers. These are textiles derived from plants like cotton, hemp, and linen. Cellulose fibers will be immediately recognizable by their strong burning paper smell. Again, no surprise because paper itself is a cellulose fiber. Ooh, smells like paper. Oh, that smells like marshmallows. It does smell like marshmallows. Cellulose fibers burn bright and quickly, so we do have to be extra alert when burning these because they go up fast. Think again, like paper. Cottons and hemp will burn more quickly than linen. Linen, on the other hand, will take a moment or two to catch before burning really brightly. Both will continue to glow after the flame has gone out, much like paper, and it will leave behind a super soft, wispy, fine gray ash. So cellulose fibers are immediately recognizable, again, by their paper smell because they are plant fibers and they will burn really quickly, they will glow, and you can tell between cottons and hemp's versus linens by the rate at which they catch flame. The linens will catch a lot slower. This cotton's on fire! We've got some mystery cottons. Let's see if they are in fact 100% cotton. Okay. No, but it is bubbling. And there's a chemical smell to that. Yeah, there's some bubbling in that that is not indicative of a natural cellulose material. We've got some puckering, which is a bit suspicious. Like we might also have a little bit of melting on the edge here. I don't think this one's a cotton. It's blended with a petroleum-based fiber. Petroleum fibers are exactly what they sound like. They are essentially plastic fibers made from petroleum that have been extruded into very fine yarns and then woven into textiles. This means that when heated in a flame, they will melt back into the plastic whence they came. In some cases, they'll melt before they really catch fire, but it is best not to play with fire here, literally, since these are made from oil and some of these can go up really fast. Polyesters especially are really prone to conflagration, so once again, we're taking some extra precautions here. Polyester, nylon, and spandex will all behave pretty similarly. You won't get any ash here as the fabric will just melt back into a hard plastic bead. There is no organic material to burn here. It is just plastic returning to plastic. This is actually a really good indicator of any petroleum-based synthetic content in any fabric. If the fabric has any hard plasticky feeling to that burnt edge, even if there is ash indicating that there is some natural fiber in there, it will still indicate that at least a portion of the fiber content is petroleum-based. The fabric will also give off a strong chemical odor. We are not sticking around too long here since these fumes can, of course, be hazardous. Petroleum-based fibers also includes acrylic, which is often used as a substitute for wool. So especially for all ye yarn workers out there, this section might be of particular interest to you. We can tell an acrylic from a wool since, once again, it'll give off that strong chemical odor. Ugh, I should have done that, that was awful, okay. And it will shrivel up and melt back into plastic. We had this, this, this idea for, for this video that we wanted to take the rest of the Shein jacket, melt the whole thing down into the pile of plastic whence it came, just to like get a physical visualization of the lump of plastic that 100% polyester garments are made from. Unfortunately, every facility we've got in touch with has refused to set fire to the Xi'an because it is so incredibly toxic. <laughs> so we are not doing that. However, to tie back to that earlier question of which fiber type you absolutely do not want to be caught 
wearing whilst you are reaching over that candle flame is the petroleum-based fabrics because not only are you literally wearing oil, when those petroleum fabrics catch fire, they start to melt and they will melt onto your skin and they will create horrific burns. If you work in a lab or if you work around flames, you probably want to avoid wearing petroleum-based fibers. The one thing that petroleum-based fibers kind of do have going for them is that they are strong. Because they are extruded, they are effectively like pushed out into very long threads. So that can help to make relatively strong fabrics in and of themselves. Whether or not the garment itself is well made, <laughs> is an entirely different story, but the fabric itself tends to be fairly strong. It's just plastic. Like there's no off put to this. There's no ash, there's no residue. It's just like melting back into its original form. So other synthetic materials include rayon, tencel, lyocell, viscose, and acetate. These are all cellulose-based fibers, but they have been manufactured by humans. So the fibers themselves don't occur naturally in the environment, like, for example, a big fluff of cotton or the flax strands pulled out to make linen, but they are synthesized from plant-based materials through a chemical process. So these will have some similar properties to the natural cellulose category, while also having some of their own synthetic properties. Like the cottons and linens, these will also catch very quickly and they will glow after the flame has been extinguished. And we'll also get that sort of burning, organic, papery, leafy smell, along with something vaguely chemical. These fumes will again be hazardous, so again, we are not gonna stick around here for too long. Is she glowing? She's glowing! She's glowing! She's glowing! All right, we got a rayon. There's silk content in it, but there's also rayon content in it. Oh, the ash is going to be very soft and it's going to be gray with rayon. Acetate, which is a common synthetic replacement for silk, is made from wood pulp. So this one can get confusing because you'll get some melting and some dripping. You may not get any ash and it'll also dry into a hard resin, much like the petroleum fibers. But the smell here will be more vinegary or peppery. One thing that you'll find with a lot of fabrics nowadays is that you will find a lot of blends, especially with cottons and, you know, especially in the realm of trousers. A lot of these fabrics are blended with elastane, with spandex to give them a little bit of stretch. So you will probably find in a lot of your cotton fabrics, you will get that slightly hard beaded edge along with some of that ash and that papery smell. Trying to find a pure 100% cotton that has no stretch in it is almost impossible and it is so infuriating. Before I buy any cotton in a store, I will take a swatch of it, take it home, burn it, and just make sure that what I'm getting is a 100% cotton. It's also really important to know what your fabric is made of if you plan to dye it because natural fibers will take dye. Petroleum-based fibers will not take dye because they are plastics. Once again, if you think of you know, taking a watercolor to a piece of plastic, it's just gonna kind of bead and it's gonna resist. And you will have to use a specialty dye for that or a specialty process for that. We've brought everything back to the studio. We've laid everything out. We've marked everything down yeah. and indicated the three properties that will really help us to identify these fabrics. That being the smell that is produced when the fiber is burnt, the quality of the flame when it is burnt, whether it catches quickly, how long the fabric burns, as well as the type of ash that is left. So by identifying these three different qualities, we can form a pretty solid idea of what is in these fabrics. But for your reference, we've put together a handy little chart, which will be... Can we link a PDF? We'll find... A, we'll find... We'll find somewhere to put it. We have whipped up a fancy little chart, which we are linking down in the description below, if you would like to take a look at that. This will be free to download. It's hosted over on Patreon, but once again, it is for everyone to download. It is free, so go forth and check that out, if that is something that you would like. All right, here is the result of the bleach test, as you can see. Very little remains to us. This was the Hainsworth, the really thick wool, which we definitely knew was going to be a natural wool. This was the thrifted waistcoat wool, which as we can see, there is nothing left in here. So we uh, once again have a 100% protein fiber. Here we have the little off scrap of a seam from the Vivian Westwood jacket. Once again, we have all of the wool completely disintegrated except for the thread that was holding the seam together. So this thread was a polyester, or it might have been a cotton thread, we don't know, but it was probably a polyester thread. And we have the silk, which was in here, which once again, because it is a protein fiber, has disintegrated. So, 
excellent way to tell if your fabric has any protein content in it. And you will know if you have a non-protein content in there by the fact that it does not dissolve. The results of the bleach test also show us firsthand why we do not bleach protein fabrics. Because if you bleach a silk, if you bleach a wool, you will end up disintegrating your fabric. We do not want that. And so, you know, we keep our bleaches very far away from our protein fabrics. Thanks once again to June's Journey for sponsoring this video. If you would like to learn some more about how that fiber content can indicate the quality of your clothing, we have a whole video on that, which I will link on screen here if you would like to go check that out. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe if you would like to stick around for some more fiber sewing clothing related type rants. And if you would like to see me do some actual sewing on this channel, I do also do that. If you hated this video, I invite you to hate watch some more of my videos because um, the engagement really helps this channel out. And we will see you once again here on the channel at some point in the future. Anon. Anon. Double toil and trouble. Cotton velvet burn and culture bubble. Cotton velvet burn and polyester bubble. Wow. This is really fun.